Ciao everyone, today we're going to be talking about something called pen law. Yeah, I said law. Nothing strictly related to law, but everything related to mixing. Coming up next. So what is pen law? Prior to tell you what pen law is and what it does actually to our mixes, it's really important for us to really solidify a couple of concepts. And I'm gonna start with the first one, also known as panning. What is panning? Every time we're dealing with mono oral or stereo material, we position the sounds within our stereo width of our speakers, also known as the sound stage. So in other words, every time we position a sound to the left speaker, that sound is said to be panned to the left. Every time we position a sound to the right, that sound has been said being panned to the right. And every time we have a sound in the center, that means that that sound is panned in center. Now, why do we use panning? Many different reasons. First of all, to make things a little bit more appealing and interesting for the mixing side of things, but also to avoid a very annoying phenomenon called masking. So spreading across our sound stage, left and right, our instruments, this will prevent greatly for instruments to mask each other or to give a little bit more space to the overall mix. To fully prove you what I'm talking about regarding panning, let's jump inside Pro Tools and I'm gonna show you something about it. So over here I have a view meter, which for the time being I will disregard. And over here I have a pure tone, right? I have a signal generator, which is creating a sine wave at 1000 Hertz at minus 18 dB, something that we'll discuss briefly. Anyhow, I'm gonna show you what happens every time I would reach to my panning knob. So right now I'm gonna grab my knob of the track called Tone, and once I move it to the left, again, I'm panning my signal all the way to the left. I'm gonna grab my pan knob again and nudge it all the way to the right. And the signal is set to be panned all the way to the right. And then I can simply option click on my pan to just rebring the signal right in the center. So spanning in the stereo field, we generally deal only with multi-channel material that will be placed to the left and to the right. But of course, panning gets way more interesting when we're gonna be talking about multi-channel surround, 5.1, 7.1 surround, up to Atmos, which pretty much deconstruct the concept of channel-based audio and moves audio to object-based audio. That means that right now we could actually perform a mix and position audio elements across 360 degrees around the listener or the mixer using also a very interesting concept of high channel. Now that we have fully understood what panning really is, another crucial and important thing to understand is the concept of headroom and how we calibrate our system. As you know, in many cases, we use digital systems with our DOS, Digital Audio Workstation, and analog systems. Now the two, in order to work properly, needs to follow some sort of like calibration that would allow you to understand and to maximize the headroom that you have digitally and in the analog domain. As a matter of fact, on digital recording devices, the concept of calibrating levels is way different from analog recording devices. Unlike many analog devices that have the zero VU as a nominal input output level, digital devices are calibrated to what is known the decibel below peaks full scale, also known as zero dB full scale, which in our DAW right now I'm using Pro Tools, it's represented by this zero up here to my meter, not the zero that it's identified that my fader is at Unity. So in other words, right now I'm going to close inside for a second and reopen my analog VU meter. As you can see over here, I will stop the sound for a minute. My VU meter has a scale that it's, you know, goes from minus over here 40 up to R0. And then we have this one, two, three in red. This signifies our headroom. In other words, 
in the analog domain, when we are mixing, we tend to drive, in some cases, the console or the preamplifier or the analog equipment a little bit above the zero. This will actually produce something known as the analog saturation, tape saturation, or the analog harmonic distortion, which in many cases, even though we are pushing the console over its maximum limits, which is actually, it's not its, its maximum limit, will introduce some very nice harmonic saturation to the signal. Now, if we flip everything to the digital, this is completely opposite. If we drive our digital, even though right now I'm assuming we're not talking about 64-bit floating point digital surface, our signal will distort and introduce a very nasty digital distortion. So it's very important for us to understand what type of reading to get with our analog and with our digital meter. So generally speaking, digital consoles, and I'm calling this a console because it is my virtual board. So I'm gonna call this a console, though it's not an actual physical console. So in digital, we have a zero dB full scale, which doesn't really allow, you know, sounds to go through and above it. In other words, when the sound reaches the maximum peak, which is zero dB full scale, the sound is clipped. That means that you're gonna introduce nasty digital distortion. You're gonna introduce a lot of squared wave sounds and a lot of nasty digital distortion, which is not what you want. So you have to be very mindful of what is known as headroom and properly gain stage your material. In the aim of achieving the best results while working both in the realm of digital and analog, generally a headroom that it's normally used inside recording studios and inside DAWs is the minus 18. We want to have at least 18 decibels of headroom. Pretty much if you look here inside Pro Tools, right now I am at minus 18 and I have approximately 18 decibel of dynamic range or headroom that I could use every time I will, you know, write an automation or insert a gain processor plugin. So this will allow me to have a lot of headroom prior to hit the maximum peak. Now this headroom doesn't really translate well within the analog domain. Every time we're using converters, right now I'm using Pro Tools HD converters, but every time you use a converter, even though the software works at, in this case Pro Tools works at 64-bit floating point, the analog domain works at 24-bit. So in order to have, you know, a reading of minus 18 dB full scale digitally, you know, a convention is that we generally calibrate our system to an overall output of minus 21 decibel. Of course, um, properly calibrating at plus four dBU if we're using an analog um, console. So what does that mean? Right now, over here, I have a sine wave, which I can play for you for a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit painful, but try to bear with me. So we have a sine wave at a thousand hertz with a level of minus 18. The first thing I'm gonna do is to open my insight, bring up my meter, and what I want to show you is this. So the overall output, it's minus 21. Of course, I am assuming that my converters, in other words, the, the analog to digital, digital to analog converters, HDIO cards have been properly calibrated as well to minus 21. In other words, the same output of minus 21 needs to return inside my converters at minus 21. So in this case, we have this. And if you haven't, go check out my video when I talk about Pro Tools loop through, which is gonna explain a little bit more the routing that the signal does every time it leaves my converters and comes back in my converters. So right now, as you can see, I'm sending a sine wave of minus 18 dB through my mix bus. And as an overall result, we have an output in RMS, root mean squared, of minus 21. Hmm. 
Hold on a second. I am sending a mono sound at minus 18 dB. The minus 18 dB is hitting my overall output and the overall reading is minus 21. Quite interesting, isn't it? Right now we have talked about only the meter digital output. What I'm gonna do right now is to bring up here this amazing VU meter from this company called TB Pro Audio. I'm gonna put a link in the description. It's actually a free plugin so you can download it and support this amazing company. As you can see right now, my VU meter, it's been calibrated at minus 18 dB. So right now we have both readings. We have a minus 18 dB uh, given from my track. As we can see, the, the actual minus 18 dB is displayed on the meter. And then we have my overall output, which will measure minus 21, okay? Bear with me for a little bit. I will unmute this track let you hear the sound is actually passing through. I'm gonna mute the mix bus for a little bit. Yes, we have it. So the overall output on my meters over here gives me a reading of minus 21, but the VU meter is showing me an actual peak at minus three. This is called pan law. And here how it works. What I'm gonna do right now is to pop up my stereo field. And I want you to pay attention on what happens to the VU meter every time I'm gonna play with my pan pot. In other words, every time I'm gonna move my source, my mono aural source, which is pan in the center, to the left and to the right of our soundscape. So I'm gonna grab my meter right now and move it all the way to the left. Take a look at the VU meter. Ah, right now we got a zero VU. I'm gonna grab my pan pot again and move it all the way to the right. So as you can see, every time the signal is at my extreme left and right, with an overall output calibrated at minus 21, right now we have hit it the zero VU. Look what happened every time I bring the signal into the center. Now both of our speakers are going to start reacting to the signal. We'll actually option click. And right now again, the signal is center in the middle. The overall output is minus 21, but our VU meter reading it's minus three. This is the effect of what we call pan law. So every time a signal it's pan to the center, we're gonna have both of the speakers, right? Left and right speakers, emitting the exact same sound. So what happened is that in order to avoid a 6 dB increase in loudness, because that's what happens when you will double up pretty much the same signal, we introduce a pad to only source that are panned in the center. In other words, this could be accessed by Command 2 on the numeric keypad within your session setup. Over here where it says pan depth, you could actually select different pan depth. So what the pan depth does is, in other words, applying a pad of three decibel to the signals there are in the center. Now, why is that? If you were to sum the left and the right into mono, now everything that it's been, you know, panned in the center will gain an increase of six decibel, leaving the rest of the mix that has been properly panned left and right much lower, which is not what you want. Another thing that you do not want is while moving a source from left to right, you don't want an exponential increase in volume every time the signal pass from the center channel and then moves all the way to the right or to the left. So in order to create a little bit more um, linear transition from left to right, passing from the center, a 3 dB 
pad or a reduction of 3 decibel gets introduced to the center channel. So the pan law describes, in other words, or determines the relationship between sound's apparent image position and the pan knob position. This refers a little bit to how the sound behaves a little bit across the sound field. Now you might wonder, but why 3dB? Why we didn't opt it for minus 2.5 or even minus 6? Well, the minus 3dB figure, it's the most natural because it ensures a total acoustic power output to the studio monitors and it still remains very subjectively constant to when we pan the source from left to right. So in order to create a sort of like constant level transitioning between sounds that goes from the left to the right, the pan law was created, padding the middle signal about 3 dB. This will give us an overall output of minus 21 and you should be calibrating your system at minus 21. So remember, outputting a sine wave of minus 18 gives us a reading on a VU meters of minus 3 because of pan law. Minus 18 plus minus 3 gives us minus 21. And that's the reason why every signal that is panned to the center will give us an overall reading of minus 21 on a meter. So I hope now you understand better the potential and also the problems that could get created if you don't understand and don't apply correctly the pan law. And until the next tutorial, ciao.